Welcome to Live from Size Lounge, showcasing alumni of Iowa State University and Cyclones Everywhere, making communities, Iowa, and the world a better place. Hello and thanks for tuning in to Live from Size Lounge. My name is Matt Van Winkle here with the ISU Alumni Association. Since February, we have dedicated one Wednesday each month to feature a 30-minute conversation with Jeff Johnson, the Laura and Russ Talbot Endowed President and CEO of the ISU Alumni Association, and a special guest to focus on campus life. And today marks our last interview of this series for the semester. So with that, I'd like to bring on Jeff Johnson with me here. Hey, Jeff, how are you today? Hey, Matt, I like your shirt, by the way. I know we did not plan this, but I think we, we are wearing identical it. shirts today. But I think there's something to be said about who our, our wardrobe consultant is. That's right. That's right. Maybe our wives. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, it's it's really an exciting week here on campus. We're going to be celebrating commencement this weekend. I call it New Alumni Week. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> a great it, word for it. Yeah, New Alumni Week. Uh, some exciting with commencement happening and it's always incredible watching this group of students, many of whom came to us four years ago, come to this next chapter in their lives where they'll meet the alumni family and truly become part of the alumni family. So we welcome them to the alumni family. And if you are graduating this spring or know someone who is graduating, don't forget to purchase a legacy cord uh, to wear during commencement. And when you become a member of the ISU Alumni Association, you can purchase that cord for $10. But it's just a great weekend to welcome this new group of graduates and in a way symbolically see them go from being students of Iowa State to now being alumni of Iowa State and recognizing that that lasts for a lifetime. Yeah, it's really fun when you go to commencement and see uh, our alumni wearing those legacy cords um, as they walk across the stage. I guess our students graduating, becoming alumni. Uh, there you the go. Stage there, Jeff. So it's really cool, um, really exciting. Again, those legacy cords are available for $10 when you become a member of the ISU Alumni Association. Uh, Jeff, we've got a great conversation with a very special guest. So why don't you go ahead and bring them on, okay? We're excited to have our guest today, and he's someone that needs no introduction. But please join me in welcoming Iowa State's Athletics Director, Jamie Pollard. And Jamie has been with Iowa State since 2005. Welcome, Jamie. Well, thanks for having me um, on the show, Jeff. Glad <laughs> to be good here. To, good to see you and hope all is well. Um, it, it is really well. Well, Jamie, we are just over a year from when the pandemic reached us here in Ames. Have you had a chance to reflect on the past year? And if so, what have you taken away so far from this experience as a leader? Wow. You know, it's when you think back, all of us think back on the past year, it's somewhat of a blur, right? But um, my biggest takeaway would be the value of culture in an organization. And, um, you know, I probably didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it until, you know, it was happening this past year. And it really made me appreciate what culture we have in our athletics program and at Iowa State um, because that culture made the challenges of, you know, the windy road of the journey that we all were on for the last 12 months so much uh, easier than when I talked to many of my peers because many of my peers, you know, had either didn't have the culture or that individuals that were fighting their culture and, you know, it was just so much more challenging. And so I'm grateful for the people that we have in our organization, that they were uh, great fits and they helped us get through it um, because, you know, this past year really required a lot of perseverance. Well, I appreciate your answer too. And I'm gonna just uh, piggyback on that, Jamie. Uh, I think the thing for me in this space as well is being able to give voice to that culture. I think we throw that word around a lot but when people say, what is that culture? And I remember in some of your correspondence, uh, you gave voice and words to that. And we appreciate that. And so I know that as you have thought through this, uh, this has been an incredible way to look at an organization and be able to define it. I started making some notes the past few weeks as I was preparing for this uh, interview. And 
you know, I thought about the busy year you've had, and I've thought about the NCAA duties, coaching changes, the pandemic, you know, successes surrounding football, women's basketball, wrestling, volleyball, softball, tennis, track. I mean, I, I could probably just go through the list of sports over there. And then hiring a new basketball coach. At the end of the day, how do you balance it all and keep things in perspective when everyone, including the media and maybe sometimes me, has advice for you? How do you keep it in perspective? Well, you know, God gives all of us certain talents and, and you know, and some things are assets and some things are liabilities. I think I, one of the things God gave me was the ability to compartmentalize things. And Jeff, I mean, you know my family's story. And I think back to you know, when James was sick as a baby and I was the one that was able to, you know, this, this goes back to pre my time at Iowa State, but um, you know, I was the one that was able to just be there in the moment and, um, and not get so caught up in like, well, gosh, what if this or what if that? And, you know, I, I think it, what it really is, it's, you know, be where your feet are. Um, and that allows you to just deal with what you can deal with in that moment um, and, and not be overwhelmed by the, you know, the thought of, gosh, all of this is coming at me at one time. I'm just going to be, I'm going to compartmentalize and I'm going to be here in this moment. And normally what you find is you get through it. You know, now the next thing does come, don't get a big break, but you, you know, you tend not to blend them together and get overwhelmed by, you know, multiple things all at one time, because quite frankly, you can only do one of them at one time. Um, and so I would say the ability to compartmentalize and to just be where your feet are and be there in the moment and do the best you can in that moment and then tackle the next thing as it comes forward. You know, based on where we're located here at the Alumni Center and where my office is up here on third floor, I get to look out at Jack Trice Stadium. And if they're not moving glass, they're moving dirt. If they're not moving dirt, there's another piece of equipment coming in and coming out. I say all this to say a lot's going on around Jack Trice Stadium, including construction related to this sports performance center. You want to provide the audience with an update on how this project is going, how this project is going, and more importantly, I think people are interested too in the pedestrian bridge. And add anything else to that that you want to. Well, Jeff, what, what I'm really excited about this project is, um, I think our fans, um, you know, w when they're able to come back this fall, are you know, if they haven't been in and around the stadium, you know, throughout the the last year, especially the last several months. Um, you know, the north end of the stadium is completely transformed. And I mean, it really has changed how the stadium looks with the walls and the concourse that's gonna go all the way around the stadium, the, the hills being repopulated in a way that more people will be able to use them, um, especially the children. You know, that's what really excites me. Um, the, you know, the performance, the Student Sports Performance Center is an awesome facility and it, and it rises up out of the earth you know, and towers over the stadium and it's going to have tremendous functionality for us from, you know, an academic center that's completely located right there underneath the, um, the dining hall for the first time ever being able to provide a dining hall for all the student athletes and the new locker rooms, the batting cages, you know, for all 450 student athletes. But that whole north end of the, the stadium complex is completely transformed and I think people will realize how this, you know, it's all being done with an intent for something even greater. And you mentioned the bridge. I mean, the bridge is a piece of this and the bridge will start construction most likely after the football season. There may be some work done this summer, but the bulk of it will start in November after the football season and will be done a year from now and will be a great gateway to campus, but it will also, again, start to tie in the vision of taking this whole section of campus that is really externally focused from the alumni center to the athletic facilities, to Sheeman, to CY Stevens, um, and really kind of starting to complement and create what I call, call a, you know, a, a, a segment of the university that's very external related. And, you know, you know, we have the vision in the long term for the entertainment district, but you know, I think people will start to see how that can all kind of come together now. 
because the entrance of the stadium is going to completely be transformed and you'll now see how the bridge connects to that location and how the re reworking of Tent Row in the long term will connect that north end of the stadium over to Hilton and to CY Stevens and to Sheeman and then you know have a uh, offshoot that goes to the alumni center. So it'll be fun. I hope um, it all can come to fruition in my lifetime. And um, I'm I'm excited about being able to continue to try to you know quarterback this process. Well, some could say you're the present day President Parks because he had a vision for this whole area out here. And it's just really impresses folks who don't know a lot about Iowa State when they're around this part of campus, that these were swamp lands. And to see that this vision came together to build the Iowa State Center. And this is now one could say Iowa State Center 2.0. So congratulations on your vision and, and the work that's starting to shape that. Jamie, all of us look back at 2020 and we're just thrilled with the success that football uh, had the opportunity to bring to the university and to do that during a time of COVID. Boy, look at what it is already projected now for football 2021. What would you like Iowa State alumni and fans to know <clears throat> as we prepare for and look to this upcoming season? You know, my message to our fans, and you're going to hear this from me a lot throughout the rest of the spring and summer and into the fall is, you know, let's make sure we continue to enjoy the journey. Um, you know, and I know that's a, you know easy statement. It gets probably overused of enjoy the journey and not the destination. But, you know, Cyclone fans have been on a long, long journey in football. And, you know, we're, we, we experience some things last fall between the Big 12 championship game and the Fiesta Bowl. And, you know, we unfortunately didn't get to experience it in, in full because not everybody could be there. But, you know, the actual destination is fleeting because, you know, it's, you know, we get to the Big 12 championship game and the game is played and then you move on and you go to the Fiesta Bowl and the game is played and you move on. And now we're talking about the next season. The excitement, the fun, the passion is in the journey. And I know there are so many Cyclone fans that through the years, um, you know, the journey has been um, a challenge. It's been bruising. It's beat many of us up. And so it's exciting because I think people are fired up for what this journey could result in this year. But I, I just want us to stay grounded in the journey because that, that's what Cyclone fans um, are known for. You know, we, we come out, we support, and, you know, we've, quite frankly, fans have given far more to this football program and athletics program in terms of passion and support than we've given back. And I just hope that they can continue to do that and not get so caught up in the destination because, um, you know, the destinations will come and go, but the journey is the exciting. You know, finally, Jamie, uh, it was recently announced by President Winterstein that, you, that your contract was extended through 2026. But I want to just let you be personal with us for a moment. And you kind of mentioned this early on. I remember when you were named athletics director. I don't know if you remember me taking your kids and taking them to a restaurant just so that you could have time. You and your wife could have time. You and Ellen could do what you needed to do. And the kids could just get out of all of that and and spend some time with a stranger, <laughs> by the way. But uh, I just want you to know I remember that. But share with us what Iowa State in this community has become to you and your family. Well, before I do that, I just, you know, I, I, you've heard me say this before, but, you know, so the last 16 years have been a blast. But if there's people out there, and there always is when you're in leadership, not everybody's happy I've been here 16 years. <laughs> but Jeff was one-fifth or one-sixth of that decision because he was on the search committee that hired me. So, you know, if you're mad that I'm still here, then maybe they ought to write you and say, hey, you hired him. So, um, and you're one of the last people that's still around that was part of that because Dr. Gilfrey's gone, Dr. Allen's gone. I mean, you know, Gary Thompson's still here, Peg Armstrong, yourself, John Shu, you know, is yeah. retired. So there's just a few of you left that still have, you know, that can say, well, you contributed to this. But in all seriousness, um, the best way I could sum that up, Jeff, is um, the Pollards are Iowa. And, um, 
you know, I, I still haven't lived here as long as I lived where I was born in the state of Wisconsin. But, you know, those probably a good chunk of those first years, you know, probably shouldn't count the same as your adult years. But the Pollards are islands. This is where our family grew up. This is where we call home. And, um, and more importantly, where Iowa State is. And um, the thought of not finishing my career at Iowa State, um, you know, it would be very sad. And so I'm excited that Dr. Winterstein um, wanted to extend my contract. And, um, you know, I don't know how many years I have left, but uh, at this point, I don't, um, you know, I don't envision or see any way, anyhow, that Jamie Pollard would look to work anywhere else but Iowa State because we're Iowans and we're Iowa Staters. And, um, you know, at the point in time that my career does come to an end, I hope it comes to an end in Cardinal and Gold and I can retire as a cyclone. Well, Jamie, I'm going to use this off script moment just to say to you uh, the times that our paths have crossed outside of work at Bible studies. Uh, you know, times with our families. I remember seeing you, your sons and daughters, and Ellen, you know, when we are away on some of our bowl trips and stuff. Uh, I want you to know that we appreciate all the work that you do, the way that you've embodied uh, the Iowa State place and spirit, because I too, like you at the time, was an outsider coming up now on 23 years with this university. This place grows on you but it also is a place where people are open to helping it stretch and be its best. So thank you for all that you have done to stretch Iowa State, uh, to put us on the journey toward better. And uh, just thank you again for spending time with me this afternoon uh, as we uh, have this opportunity to be engaged in this interview. I know you are busy. I know you have things after this as well, but thank you so much for all that you do for Iowa State for the city of Ames, for this state, for our fan base, and more importantly, for this university. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure and an honor that you uh, chose to have me on this show. And um, we do share, you know, you got me by seven years, but, um, you know, there are many people that probably thought Jeff Johnson and Jamie Pollard would not be here at years in 2021 you know, back in 2010 or 2009. And we've proven them wrong, haven't we, Jeff? Well, what, we, what we've, we've proven, proven them right is, too. Well, I was going to say proven them right because there are some people who believe that we should be here and we have shown that we have brought something. But the more important thing is we've helped accentuate and illuminate what's good and great about Iowa State University. And so thank you for all that you do. Get on to your next assignment. But thanks for being a Cyclone. Thanks for being our athletics director. And thanks for being a friend. Go thanks, Cyclones. Jeff. Well, thank you so much, Jeff and Jamie, for joining us. And thank you all for watching with us today. We hope to see you online next Wednesday, May 12th, for our next Live from Size Lounge interview. Have a great rest of your week and go Cyclones. Go Cyclones. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Jeff. This series is made possible by members of the Alumni Association. If you are interested in staying connected to the university and receiving all the benefits and services of being a member, visit isualum.org.